experts react. Red Dead Redemption 2, baby. J-Rock is here. And we're about to check out Gameology, a channel that J-Rock came across where they have experts uh, react to certain things in certain video games. And today we got a hunter who is going to tell us if what we're seeing uh, in Red Dead Redemption 2 as far as hunting goes is actually realistic or not. So come on back. Let's do the damn thing. J Rock has come back to you too. You too. What is happening? And in and in with the millions and millions of J Rock's fans from all over the world. J Rock is here. About to check out this uh, experts react from Gameology with Red Dead Redemption Two. We got an expert hunter who's gonna look at what we're. Uh, the, the hunting in Red Dead Redemption 2 and let us know if it's real or if it's not real, all right? If you have a reaction request, something you want J-Rock to check out, make sure you post it down in the comment section below. If I choose your request, I'll give you a shout out right here on the Great Ones channel. Let's check this thing. I would reach out my gun barrel and touch that bear before he gets up on it because they will swipe you and it's enough to kill you on something that big. Uh-huh. Now that was the fastest skin job I have ever seen in okay. Raccoon. I that don't even really look really. Myself. Now he's lassoed a deer, which uh, I can guarantee you that deer would yank your arms right out of your shoulder. And at this point, this deer would charge you with those antlers. And yeah, I mean, this is all great for video games, but this is absolutely unrealistic. Mm. Hey everybody, this is Tim Spike Davis with Gameology. I'm an avid hunter, writer, and contributor many hunting publications. I'm also the world's greatest hunting cartoonist. And today you are going to see my expert reaction to the video game Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay, this guy is on horseback with a bow. West here's got a rifle as well slung on his back. Beautiful country. Easy now. Benefits to riding horseback is they have a lot better hearing than we do. And a lot of times just the pointing of their ears can tell you if there's game around. They can sense the presence of another animal like a bear or a larger animal like a deer or something. A lot of times a good horseback rider will pay attention to his horse while he's riding. And he's got a big old black bear here digging up probably some roots or maybe some grubs underground. Bears like to eat lots of grubs. Not the best shot. Now there's somebody riding up behind that bear, which is kind of ridiculous because that bear would not have sat there while another rider came in. This guy, I don't know why, but he goes to choose to go from his rifle to his bow. People do kill bear every year with bow. You have to have a certain amount of poundage, that very thick hide, very sturdy animal. So you're not just shooting some little flingy, light pounded bow at this thing. And that guy shot way too far with a bow. And that guy is very accurate for shooting at a distance. Now he is processing this hide. And to get a hide off a of bear like this again is extremely uh, just physical to process this whole thing out. Yep, he's got the hide. To leave the entire animal like that is just absolute disgrace. You should use every part of that that you can pack out. Any sportsman, any true hunter I know would never leave just the rest of the animal there to rot. Very disrespectful to the animal. But he's dead. I don't think now he cares. Now wild boar and he's got his bow out and bad idea, boar charging. So it ain't disrespectful to kill me, it's just disrespectful to leave no me. The boar's just gonna stand there and let you just level a gun on him and bring him like that. He'd still just be running his yeah. test into you. But yeah, it was a good shot placement at that short of a distance. He processes that whole board too. That's some good meat on there. Probably not knowing him. Hunting western raven with a bow and arrow. Not really much reason why you'd want to shoot ravens with a bow. Unless they were a nuisance animal that's coming after your crops or stuff that you're trying to grow. Very tricky shot. But I've heard of people eating crow and eating ravens and probably use the feathers for making fletching. Y'all eat crow before? Again, not much meat. The meat's going to be really dark, and whatever that crow's been, or that raven's been eating on, you're going to taste it in that meat, too. So if it's been eating on dead animals, the meat's going to taste not so great. It's weird to me he took the raven, but left a mm. full-grown bear. Not uh, somebody I'd want to go hunting with. Not 
sure if scopes were readily available at this time in history. Yeah, they I doubt were, it. They were probably not the most accurate. This guy zooms in, that's probably not accurate either because scopes didn't have uh, the ability to zoom in and zoom out at that point. But uh, he'd have been better just to use his skill as a huntsman and woodsman to sneak up and get closer to this elk. But shooting across a canyon like that is a sketchy shot. So he's working down these rocks, hopefully trying to get downwind of this animal so it doesn't see him or smell him before he uh, is within range. He's looking around like he forgot something at camp. Now he's swinging over, looking. Shooting above the horizon, which is always a bad idea, but he shot and made connected on the elk, so now he's going to have to hoof it up that canyon. Cross a stream, get his boots wet, and hopefully he doesn't have to drag that thing all the way back. I don't know why he didn't ride, ride his horse across that stream. Hopefully he is going to use every part of this elk. The meat, the hide, the sinew, the horns can all be used for tools and repairs. He actually used uh, the bladder as a water carrying canteen. There's no way you're gonna cut the horns off of a head like nope. You could sit there with a jackhammer and try to get the horns off. But yeah, you yeah, game, you're not so gonna cut them off. He's got like the that. hide and the horns, and again, if he leaves that meat on there, this guy is a douchebag. <laughs> Looking down in the valley, seeing a bunch of game animals. Not sure if it's even good enough to identify what there. The scope is probably not good enough to accurately tell if that is a coyote or if that is a deer. He's making a lot of noise and a lot of movement. Those coyotes would have been long gone. They would not have stayed around. Coyotes are very suspicious. They have amazing eyesight, amazing sense of smell. I believe it's 10,000 times stronger than a human being. So they are an animal that is extremely difficult to So hunt. if you must it, there's no way a coyote will let they you, smell you on a rock like that that close take a shot so these are either extremely dumb coyotes that's a pretty slow reaction after a shot there runs a well you can't tell if it's a bear or a boar looks he like a boar coyote, but that could be probably wrong probably not the sharpest one in the pack depending on uh you know the hide if it's winter which it doesn't look like it's winter so he probably doesn't have a very thick hide the only reason why you want to shoot a coyote outside of using the pelt or eating them is uh for predator control so if you have sheep or livestock and they're eating up your stuff you have to take care of business hunting a wild boar that's eating a dead animal was probably that bear you left back up on the slope they'll eat themselves they'll eat other wild pigs that are dead know that if you leave animals yeah, like that nasty. dead other animals are going to benefit from it and that's fine it's a circle of life but maybe it's an animal you don't want to have benefit from it like a wild pig like this i'd go back to that spot if you left a gut pile and makes a headshot on this thing and what looks like about 70 yards and again wild pig would have smelled you heard your horse jingling with all that tack on it pretty stupid pig to be sitting there that close to someone's camp but maybe he was hungry too could be a raccoon and a turkey well, raccoons are little miniature bears they are tough animals they can take a beat and they just do not drop like that Especially if you shoot them up in the butt like that, they will run with your arrow. Now that was the fastest skin job I have ever seen a raccoon. I have a raccoon head that I yeah. made myself. I don't know what he pulled out of that bird. What did he pull but out? He just left the rest of that bird. He could use the feathers for fletching. I Man, you could use the legs as a back scratcher off a of turkey. This guy's just walking around, just acting as though he doesn't care much for these animals. He's shooting. I'm a ball, son. Hunting a grizzly bear with... We'll see what he's hunting with. If he pulls that bow off, I'll laugh my head off. I wouldn't <laughs> use anything shy of a big old rifle for a hunting grizzly bear. People do hunt them with bows, but they're braver or dumber than me. So he's got a bear out there milling around in the snow. Looks like about 200 yards away. He's sneaking up on this thing. Really, what they probably would have been using this time period would have been what's called a sharps carbine. And uh, I think that looks like one with Sal, but he's doing a good thing of getting him to the side of this bear. He's going to either want a shoulder shot or a heart and lung shot right behind the shoulder. And it looks like he does a shoulder shot. 
that's pretty accurate. That couldn't probably happen. If it was a good shoulder shot, the bear would have actually fallen right where it was standing. Let's do that across an icy river, and that is, that's more dangerous than that bear. Lucky if all his gear doesn't go falling down in that stream. Yep, there you go. Huh. Been there, done that. Should have thought to bring some snowshoes when he was uh, planning this day of hunting. Uh, I know they had snowshoes back there, and so at least he got the blood on the snow accurate. That's very true, too. It's really a blessing when it's out in snow like that. It is easy to track a bleeding animal. Of course, yeah. he didn't have to track very far. I think it's only about 30, 40 feet from where he got shot. I would reach out my gun barrel and touch that bear before he gets up on it, because sometimes they will, their last throws of life, they will swipe you, and it's enough to kill you on something that big. This guy is gutting out this bear. Yeah, go down the center, skin off the back, and you're going to have to flip it to the other side. Now, this is, in this snow and in this kind of weather, is extremely physically exerting. If this guy walks off from this bear again, this Red Dead Redemption guy is kind of annoying. He's throwing away a lot of good meat. He don't if care don't about the meat, it, son. If he's full, he should give it to his neighbor. He That's don't want no bread. Do. Hey, he don't want no water. He don't even want meat. Very good neighbor. Mountain Rocky Mountain cow elk with a rifle. Generally, the female ungulates, I believe they're called, taste a lot better because they don't have the testosterone in the meat. Usually the cow elks are a lot tastier. Mm. Good shoulder shot. Not sure why that elk ran off. This guy's hauling butt. And his legs are not as long as an elk, so he is going to be having a lot harder of a haul than that elk. But she's leaving a decent blood trail, so I'm surprised he hasn't turned into a snowball and just avalanche down the side of that mountain hill. Yeah, no. All the energy this guy is exerting getting to this thing, he's going to be dying of hypothermia. See, I think it was in his death throes. That's uh, lucky that bear was in the same way. Now he's going to skin out that elk and hope to God he actually takes some meat to somebody instead of leaving it for waste. Yeah, that don't make no the sense. The nice thing about the snow is it, it does cover up the sound. You can muffle any of the busting any twigs. Or, there is a benefit to that. Yeah. It's hard to haul through, but he probably could sneak up a lot closer than he could if there was just leaves and twigs on the ground. You gotta be so careful with the moose though. Sitting there and kind of quartering towards him, which is not an ideal shot. And the fact that he's gonna try to shoot this with a bow again, a real hunter would wait for a better opportunity than a full frontal quartering away shot. Just does not offer high quality ethical shot placement of heart and lungs. You're just sticking arrows in meat and that moose will suffer and die a slow, painful death. He can travel a lot farther with those arrows in him than you can just in the snow without arrows in you. So, not realistic, but the other idea is that this guy is now going to have to skin this animal on the side of a snowy, rocky yeah. slope. It's going to be a lot it's a video of game, though. exertion. What he's also going to have to realize is that there are other animals in this area that are going to want to eat that too, so he better keep his eyes out for bear and wolves and mountain lions. <sighs> they should be consulting the these folks. The advantage to hunting rabbits on horseback like that is, is that you would have the ability to be above your game. The downside is see, that's a very small target and the stability riding on horseback and shooting a bow. There's better weapons to use and better tactics. If you were to use just a bow and arrow, you could do it walking around. Uh, you'd have a lot better, more stability. If you were on horseback, you could probably use a shotgun or something like that to try to give you better chances of shooting a rabbit like that. And that's a lot of blood for a rabbit, but well, maybe it was just a rabbit who was high on iron or what. It sure is a lot of blood for one rabbit. Dang, look at all that blood. Hunting a white-tailed buck on horseback. I have had some friends who've done this. Me and horses don't get along too well. I've been bit and kicked and thrown by horses. I generally try to hunt just on my own two legs. This white-tailed deer would be booking just like this one is. I just don't see a horse being able to keep up with a white-tailed deer like this. In this kind of snow and a rocky terrain, this is a great way to break your horse's leg. Once he's done that, then you're really jammed because you've lost your deer and your horse. But this guy is adventurous, so he clearly cares about as much of his horse as he does about all the animals he's killing. The horse <laughs> has got a full-grown uh, elk hide and saddle and a grown man on his back. And now he's lassoed a 
deer, which uh, I can guarantee you that deer would yank your arms right out of your shoulder. Uh -huh. At this point, this deer would charge you with those antlers, and yeah. I mean, this is all great for video games, but it's just absolutely unrealistic. The other downside to that whole thing is that deer's meat would be so full of lactic acid yeah. that it would taste horrible after being run down like that. Not an ideal method to hunt any white If you think about lassoing a deer off a horse, just keep on playing video games. Not a good idea. Hunting big horn sheep on horseback. Okay. This guy's horse is just like got these toughest ankles he does. and legs I've ever seen. Now he's got a longhorn sheep here right now. I think it's leaving about 80 gallons of blood, which makes tracking it easy, but if you're on a horseback falling right behind it, you don't really need a blood trail, so. Yeah, now he's going to dispatch it with his pistol, which is humane. It's a good thing to do, but I guarantee you that animal would have been dead. Oh my gosh, that guy is strong. He just hoofed a 120, 150 pound sheep right over his shoulder like it was nothing. Dang, I'd have had Looked like he was using more of his back than his leg. He that. was bent straight over like this. Hey everybody, this is Tips Instead of my squatting down. Gameology, and you just watched my expert reaction to the video game Red Dead Redemption 2. If you like Gameology and you want to check him out, look him up on YouTube and Facebook. If you want to learn more about me, Tim Spike Davis, check out scatterthoughtscartoons.com. And I just want to warn you ahead of time, if you ever think about throwing a giant bighorn sheep over your shoulder, make sure you have a good chiropractor because you're going to need them. God bless. See you out hunting. Well, J-Rock says this. Um... It's nice to have this sort of input. I think the developers and the game makers need to be consulting the experts about, you know, stuff like this, you know, because I get some stuff is for video games, but some of this stuff is just, it's just too unrealistic. Like, when you, when I look, play the Arkham games, Batman Arkham games, or Spider-Man games, and I'm, I'm literally watching groups of men stand in a circle and wait they turn to try to go with Batman one-on-one. -on -one. Hell, even two on one. I know, and I think in the Arkham, get, uh, get, um, is it Arkham, is it Arkham Origins or Arkham Knight? I can't remember. Where three of them would charge you at once. You could count on three at one time. But even still, ain't no five, six, seven, ten dudes just finna stand there. They finna bum rush you all at one time, all right? You gonna have to divide and conquer. You gonna have to split them up, take them out one at a time. Cause ain't no way they gonna get their gats out, their brass knuckles, their bats, their pipes. They come at you, tire irons, whatever they get their hands on. They come at Batman full force. They're not just gonna stand there and wait. Um, but I still like the game though. But love these expert reaction. Probably do a little bit more of these. All right, post your comments down below. Let J Rock know what you thought of his reaction to this video. No rhyme intended on that line. If you enjoyed the Gray Woods reaction, hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Also, hit that bell so you can be notified when it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Until next time. Mamba, Gigi, and Wakanda. If you smell what J-Rock is.